All right, next up, we are super excited to have our buddy and mortgage guru extraordinaire, Patrick Glaros. By the way, that's Patrick Glaros, G-L-A-R-O-S, patrickglaros.com. Um, welcome to the show, Patrick. What's up, man? Thank you. I'm happy to be here. All right, here's the deal. Let's just get right to it. Uh, not everyone, but lots of people are losing their minds over uh, rapidly rising mortgage interest rates. So can you just give us the quick like one minute lay of the land of what's actually happening and then we'll get into how that impacts folks? I'd be happy to. The main things that we're seeing in the market and that people are you know kind of hysterical about uh, are that we've seen such a quick increase you know in the two decades that I've been doing this, I've never seen interest rates rise so quickly in a short period of time. However, we're also coming out of a period where interest rates were at true historic lows. You'll hear historic lows thrown out a lot relatively, but those were the lowest rates that we had ever seen or experienced. And there are a lot of factors that led to those being an anomaly. And so while rates have gone up a lot and quickly, for perspective, I like to zoom out to 2018, 2019, and that's about where we sit right now. Rates were still good then. When they, you say that you've never seen rates increase in such a short period of time, how long a time period are you specifically relating to? Is it the last few weeks, the last few months? And, and what is that, that increase, just to you know, make that really clear to folks? Sure. So... As far as the increase that we've seen in a lot of different scenarios, we've seen interest rates increase anywhere from one and a half to 2% from where they were as recent as December or, or, or early January. Really since the year turned over, we have seen those interest rates increase um, you know, at a rapid clip, just like we've seen other markets correcting themselves. Uh, it's just one of them that you know, gets felt uh, in, in such a short period of time and, and such a big movement. So for obviously different interest rates for different people, credit score, price points, all that stuff, but ballpark figure, are we talking three and a half move to five and a half or what, what's kind of where are we and what, from what to what? You've just about nailed it. So in general terms, you know, 30 year rates were somewhere in the threes and now they're more likely to be in the fives. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't find circumstances where you can you know, maybe buy the rate down and still get it into something with a four, but as a whole, I would say we have made that shift from the threes into the fives. Okay, now I know you can't tell the future, but generally speaking, I know you follow the markets and you follow the things that sort of indirectly or directly impact mortgage rates. Just we know that you don't know this, but what is the best information out there say? Are rates going to stay the same, continue to go up? Do we think they might come back down anytime soon? What's the future look like based on the best information we have? I would expect that we end up seeing rates more likely to stay the same or see some increases higher. Now, when I say increases higher, that's you know, it's, it's relative to the costs that are associated with those loans. You know, what are we having to pay in closing costs or points to get to one of these interest rates? And that's part of the, uh, the thing that's just amplified right now and, and magnified because rates have gone up so quickly, lenders are continuing to have to hedge about what they think might be to come. And okay. so if we can establish some sort of even sideways range, then we can see not only rates come down a little bit, but the costs associated with each of those rates start to become a little bit more normal. Okay. Hey, folks, you're listening to Texas Real Estate with Todd Tremonti. We've got Patrick Glaros talking us through what is going on with the current mortgage market with the increase in rates and the impact on home buyers and sellers. We're going to get to that in just one second. If you have mortgage questions, Patrick, where can folks get a hold of you to ask about their specific situations? They're always welcome to call us here at the office. And you can reach our office directly at 972-728-3420. Or you can visit my website at patrickglaros.com for some general information and some simple ways that you can connect with our team 
to get some more information. Now, if they go to patrickglaros.com, let's make sure they spell it right. That's G-L-A-R-O-S, patrickglaros.com. There's mortgage calculators there and lots of tools, but if someone knows they're ready to rock and roll, can they just go ahead and start that process of getting a mortgage on your website or do they need to call? They can. Our system will allow them to go directly to the website, patrickglaros.com, click the apply now button, and there will be a short form, about 10 or 15 minutes. They can provide all of the information that we would then use to help give them some concrete information and a pathway towards pre-approval. Now, I've been telling people for 20 years that when they work with you or your team, that you guys are the best in the business at educating them through the process. So without taking up a ton of time, just really quickly, can you summarize what, what I mean by that, what you guys do to help make sure people understand all of their options? Gladly. We feel like everybody needs an opportunity to be heard before we can really know what sort of loan options are going to fit or what sort of price points are going to fit. So the, so the first part is just exploration of what our goals are. And we come into that at different phases. Sometimes that's a purchase price range. Uh, sometimes we don't yet know the price. We just know what we're comfortable from a monthly payment standpoint. And so either way, we can reverse engineer that and start to lay out some side-by-side -side comparisons that show what do these different price points look like what are the monthly payments that tie to them so that in the end you can be equipped with all the information that you need to go out and cast a real search in the market. And the main goal is when you find that home that you love, that that's not the time that you want to go and explore and find out if you can afford it or qualify for it. Great we want point. that to all be in place and understood so that the clients can be in a position to act quickly because that's what it takes in this market. You all know much more about that and how competitive things are. And so we just want to be ready when you call to yeah. let those clients put their best foot forward and have their offer get accepted. Uh, it's, it's an excellent point because if you find the house and then try to try to go get your financing in order, it's gone. That's just, that's just literally almost no other option there. We were just talking about it with, um, with some of our coaching clients around the country this past week about, Hey, how are we, uh, how are we educating and helping inform people <clears throat> that are thinking of buying a home, but they don't, they don't want to like sit down with you beforehand. Right. And one of the things that we talked about was, in this market, maybe more than any other market, right? I mean, definitely now because it's so relevant, houses are getting snapped up so quickly. If you don't have a plan in place, it, I mean, it's, it's, I'm gonna say it's virtually impossible to get the thing done. And it's the same way if you don't have your, your lending in place. It, it's, all a, it's all a piece of the puzzle, right? Not and only your lending in piece. place, but a lender who understands your situation yeah. and will help you communicate with the seller to get a home. Okay, I wanna make a few quick points. Um, Patrick is always my first call and and he's anything residential mortgage I've ever done has been with Patrick, but occasionally I'll do something that Patrick doesn't do and he'll point me to other great people. So anytime you're borrowing for property, I recommend you reach out to Patrick. Go to patrickglaris.com. He's pointing me towards another lender for commercial property or for construction type things, but traditional residential mortgage, Patrick is my guy. I think he should be your guy reach out to him, go online, patrickglaros.com, NMLS number 308804. I wanna ask you one more question before we wrap up here, Patrick, because you referenced it earlier, and I'm not sure that most people fully understand it, but you talked about buying down a rate. So just really quickly, what, what does that mean? Whenever we look at an interest rate, a common question that we get is, what's the rate? And there's never really an answer, direct answer to that because we always have a range of rates whenever we plug in somebody's scenario and go to the market to find out what's available. And so part of that exploration, just like we might compare prices or down payments, sometimes once we've narrowed it down, we already have the home in place, we know the down payment, now we need to decide what's the right interest rate and in this case, closing costs or discount points that are associated with it. And so the way that we look at that is on the rate sheet, there's kind of your market rate that we'll see, but there's always opportunity to buy that rate down to a lower interest rate and in what would be an upfront cost of discount points. In so, the end, so for basically me, that's if I, if I pay a little bit more of it upfront, I can have a lower rate for the, lo the whole life of the loan. Exactly. And so, you know, what we try to be cognizant of 
is the lowest rate on the wrong strategy can be detrimental. Right. And I'll say that again, the lowest rate on the wrong strategy can be detrimental to our finances if it's not built into the big picture. And so what we have to look at is if somebody's going to be in their house for, you know, in their mind, seven, 10, 20 years, well, that's going to result in a different loan option that I may recommend because they're going to have the time to get the benefit of that lower interest rate. And we don't know how long we'll be in the home or in the loan, but we can at least make our, make our best guess or assessment of that so that we can choose accordingly. At the same token, if somebody is not planning on being in a home for very long, it does not make sense usually to pay a lot of upfront points or fees at closing to get a lower interest rate. It's such it an important point, cool. and I don't think very many people consider it. We had one more question yeah, come in, and then we're going to kill it on time here. Give me, give me 30 seconds to a minute on... What impact uh, does the Fed increase, uh, Fed increases have on mortgage rates? We get lots of questions about this. The Fed increases do not directly impact mortgage rates is the uh, first kind of statement and clarification there. And the distinction is when the Fed is talking about raising rates, they are moving the federal funds rate, which really determines short-term borrowing costs. And so when banks are lending or borrowing from the Fed, that is what they have access to the money. And in turn, that influences our short-term loans, things like car loans, credit cards, anything like that. Now, while the same influencing factors are there towards the Fed funds rate and mortgage rates, it does not mean that if the Fed is increasing rates half a percent, that mortgage rates have gone up. Usually, when we see that news, um, it's usually already have, has been built in or baked into what we've seen in mortgage rates. So, um, you know, I wouldn't have any fear or concern about all that commentary of Fed increasing rates uh, just because it is not a direct correlation with what you'll see when you go to finance a home. Ultimately, what I would say is if you have questions about the mortgage rate, don't try to answer that with the headlines. Don't try to answer that on the news reach out to an expert. And I'm a big believer in a local expert because they understand the intricacies of the market. And if you're in the DFW area and you want to reach out to Patrick, Patrick, let them know one more time what's the best way to get in touch with you. 